<laughs> Welcome to Life Lessons in Bon Jovi Song. So I've had one of my famous dropping of the bus, uh, or not dropping of the bus. <laughs> I was combining, I was on the struggle bus with dropping of the wagon, but I dropped off the wagon and I was in the struggle bus. <laughs> and um, uh, so yeah, I'm back and like lots of things happened and um, um, yeah, I, I'm just really happy about the results. I'm really happy about, you know, knowing where I'm going now. <laughs> but um, yeah, unfortunately, it has been at the expense of writing. Uh, um, uh, yeah, everything that I do for, you know, for this channel and my other channels and uh, uh, for my blog. So that was really, you know, that was my prize of love. <laughs> The prize for, um, uh, yeah, for getting clarity on, um, yeah, where, where the bus is going and where the wagon is going. So, um, I'm back here, um, with Live Lessons in Bon Jovi Songs. And we're at the second album and it's, uh, the album, uh, I talked about this in the previous video. Oh, the, the, <laughs> the image is shaking because I am, you know, I have my camera on, um, a chair that my cat uses to scratch his paws. So now that he finds his, uh, one of his preferred spots to, to, to scratch in the middle of the living room, he's like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> Can we keep it here? Um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, the album, the second album, I talked about this in the first video about this album, um, so that was the previous one, In and Out of Love, uh, that it was a, you know, Bon Jovi was on the struggle bus on this album, <laughs> they didn't drop off the wagon, but they were on the struggle bus, so ultimately this whole album has, you know, ended up in, 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 uh, uh, Bon Jovi history, but not on uh, any, uh, uh, you know, uh, current set lists or uh, whatever. And um, uh, yeah, so it's kind of like uh, um, the sore thumb standing, sticking out. <laughs> but do not be mistaken. It's actually, uh, it is such a good album. And one of the, one of the things I read and I will give give credit to the person who wrote this um, I think his his name's from Australia and he has a blog called destroyer of harmony I think um, and he, he has devoted many blog posts to Bon Jovi and in one of them he uh, um, uh, says about this album uh, 7800 Fahrenheit he says something like uh, that it was really meant to be uh, or that it had to be made because it really pushed that melodic um, 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 rock and metal sound from the first album really pushed it all the way up to the you know stretched it to the boundaries of what was musically possible so like they couldn't go anywhere with melodic rock from this if they wanted to grow they had to kind of like uh, uh, bring in Desmond Child I think that would be <laughs> But, you know, bring in someone who, who, um, uh, I hope I was correct with Desmond Child because otherwise I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> they're going to cut it out anyway. So their third album was their biggie and it was the one where we all got to know them. Um, so, so the, the writer, the blogger of Destroyer of Harmony says something like it was because in the second, uh, album, it was really the the melodic uh, metal sound was really pushed to its boundaries and and that had to be done in order to to, to uh, proceed to grow um, and to take a new direction and to start again. So I'll put that link down below as to 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 that blog post. So you can read it. So uh, we're at the second song of this. Uh, uh, of the Struggle Bus album <laughs> from Bon Jovi and it's almost like I understood that this was going to be um, a topic that was close to my heart and that it was uh, um, uh, yeah I don't think I have 
talked about the life lesson that I'm going to share with you today before and it's actually kind of like me um, uh, yeah me stepping up to okay we're going to have this talk so uh, love lies from this second album I have the album here it's the one where you see the face of John Bon Jovi in kind of like a fiery background um, um, the price of love is um, the uh, um, spiritual twin, as it is called, from uh, Love Lies, which was on the first album. This word spiritual twin comes from a article that is a ranking of all the Bon Jovi songs, I think up to 2016 or something. And uh, it's a great blog post. I always give it um, when uh, I make these um, videos. And I usually mention at what spot of the 300 and plus songs as it was then uh, the song um, is. So you get that every time. But this song, Price of Love, was actually at number... It was really high up as it should be. Because great, great song number 174 so that's about like halfway of all the songs that were ever created by Bon Jovi in 2016 this one was halfway so that's you know that's pretty high up that's that's really great for an album that was you know that is no longer really acknowledged by uh, by the band or you know the songs are never played anymore so um uh, that article the ranking of all those songs that had this um, uh, kind of like mentioned it's a spiritual sequel to love lies and I think that's a really great way to say it so it's kind of like in this song the price of love they actually repeat the word love lies so I have um, uh, Mm -mm -mm. Uh, practicing his love lies he returns to his wife that is like if you take two sentence, sentences together uh, from this lyric you get that so uh, practicing his love lies you know reference to the first album song from the first album love lies he runs to his wife um, uh, so that's the theme of um, uh, of this song and uh, well like I said it's a, um, a melod it's really a, a, um, a great example of how they musically pushed the genre to its boundaries music it's a very strong song but lyrically and that's what this love lesson is going to be about because I wrote another uh, sentence down that you can uh, um, to kind of like give it some context you live your life to take that chance when you're a master of the art of romance so now combined the art of romance with practicing his lies he runs to his wife and um, uh, then the title the price of love this this song is about an affair. It's about a man who uh, has an affair and returns to his wife. And some of the lyrics actually refer to the woman with whom he is having the affair. And um, uh, there's a lot to be to be said uh, about this. I, I, I'm going to kind of like get two things out. Um, one is that I think that, you know, sexuality is in our society, um, um, it's kind of like a taboo subject and, um, you know, monogamy is the norm and, um, uh, that in itself is a problem. I'm just going to like very briefly talk about this. But the problem is the sexuality is this, you know, this force of nature that you carry inside of you. It's like, you know, there's another Bon Jovi song, The Fire Inside, which is about artistic passion, basically. But 
sexual passion is also it's you know it's all linked together and and by just saying oh i'm never going to you know have sex with other people again it's like um it's it's such a kind of like i would say like a brutal brutal interruption of of energy that just naturally should be flowing i think so there's a, a lot of a lot of you know um, um to be said about this from like a natural energy perspective um but what i want to do today is 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 kind of like a, a tiny um bit of, of of background why is that um uh, why do we have that kind of like uh shaming of sexuality going on why do we why do we think that it is um, um like here in the netherlands for example um it's very common to and even john bon jovi did, did that not about sexuality but about other things uh you know like if you it's very common to make fun of men in their midlife crisis and um part of that is is you know, often, if they're lucky, a <laughs> part of their midlife crisis is sexuality, but it can also be like, you know, I don't know, you know, get a motorcycle or whatever. Uh, it's very, very common in the Netherlands to, you know, kind of like shame men for their, you know, exuberant, just <laughs> let it all hang out, um, uh, uh, midlife crisis. And I have not met a man like that you know going through midlife crisis but i know that the shaming is very common here uh if i would know a man like that in midlife crisis i would say you know just go for it it's like the biggest and best present you can give yourself because it really kind of like it just you know uh um it, it it's kind of like you're just stripping away all the um all the things that that were not good for you that you have been you know kind of letting into your life and all the the boundaries that you you know uh, uh put on yourself all the constraints and unhealthy constraints so it's kind of like it's a very um daring thing to do i think to have a midlife crisis uh, as a man and to go all in but as a woman and now we're getting to the to the point where i want to be you rarely ever see that. You rarely ever see a woman who just, you know, <laughs> just buys a motorcycle and, uh, you know, has affairs and uh, who just, you know, <laughs> goes all in on her midlife crisis. And part of that is because women's sexuality and women's development goes in a different, you know, has is different to, to a man's. But um, a lot of, a, a very important part of that, and now I'm kind of like getting to a terrain where you're like, really, that's, that's her story? Uh. <laughs> a very important part of that is because men and women are not financially equal. And that is really both the reason why we have, uh, uh, this whole shame about sexuality and why monogamy is the norm and it's also the reason why men can you know just let it fall to pieces when they're when they're having a midlife crisis and women cannot they just cannot financially afford <laughs> to do that to you know break their marriage bond and, and because they're way more dependent on um, on their spouse and on the community you know liking them and so it's kind of like a black and white picture and of course we've had um kind of like you know financial emancipation in in in, in recent years but i think it's a great way because it's called the price you know capitalism of love i think it's just really great and i just want to kind of like you know drop that here <laughs> Hopefully not like a bomb, but you just kind of like you know, drop it here gently. The idea that um, when capitalism started, 
you know, the men in high places, they got all the money and they were allowed to trade and they kind of like, you know, just had this old boys network going on where they had all the money and they, you know, <laughs> had their great time. And then, then you had the women who were doing unpaid labor and you had the craftsmen who were paid, but modestly. So the people who were the craftsmen and the women and the work that was done by slaves is to this day not in a um, uh, part of capitalism. So in other words, who can afford to have affairs and have a, you know, a midlife crisis with, you know, bells on. It's the same people, the same men, or the same people who were in the professions who, you know, right from, you know, ancient Greek times, 2,500 years ago, the, the people who were then at like, like the founding fathers, literally, of capitalism, those people who have professions who are, you know, into money, into banking, they already had banks with, with um, ancient Greece, uh, uh, who are, who really are with their fingers in the money, literally, <laughs> um, who can afford things like that. So the, I, so what happened is we have kind of like, that that dependency that has been there for women uh, uh, to uh, have their men bringing in money and as a society, you know, the people who are lower paid to uh, um, to have that kind of like dependence on the people who are paying you, who are in that 20%, that is or the companies who are paying you who are in the 20%, that is, is kind of like an, an, an unequalness in society at large, as well as within marriages, you know, traditionally. In the Netherlands, women get, got fired in the 60s, still up until the 60s, uh, so, you know, 1961, 1962, um, uh, when they um uh when they married so it's really that recent when women were not allowed to make money and be financially independent from their uh, uh husband so you have this this because of capitalism you have this dependency you have financial dependency between that let's say you know that take these Greek uh, 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 percentages, uh, these 80% of society who is on um, uh, the bad side of capitalism or who serve in a way that is not included in capitalism. Um, so you have that kind of inequality, inequality and you have the inequality in marriages um, that kind of like only works, let's just take this marriage as an example, it only works if the people are not sexually free. Because if if the one who is dependent becomes sexually free, then uh, uh, they are no longer certain that the other person will pay for them or pay for their, you know, um, um, uh, shelter and food. Um, and within society, you have the same thing, you know, often um, uh, being sexually free or taking sexual liberties is only possible if you have financial freedom. And um, if you don't have financial freedom, if you haven't kind of like, you know, fought your way into the 20% uh, um, that it has that financial freedom, then your sexual freedom is going to have consequences. So what I, what I think that, um, uh, when I think about the price of love, um, I think for me, the life lesson is let's 
please, please stop shaming people for their sexuality, whatever it is, you know, because there is this economic inequality that we should be worrying about. If you want to, you know, strive for a world where everybody, um, um, you know, can have, can have, uh, um, can feel safe and uh, can blossom, then what we need to do is to make sure that everybody is taken care of, that everybody is, you know, financially independent or that they are within a community that take, takes care of them regardless of their sexuality. And, you know, where everybody can contribute and um, um, where we are judged for more than um, just if we're monogamous. You know, it's, it's so easy to, to focus, uh, you know, a, um, uh, a conversation around, you know, monogamy is good and cheating is bad, but I think, I think we should all have a different conversation. And that conversation is how can we be together in a way where you know we can we can all prosper and we all you know look after each other and we can be happy for each other um, instead of instead of this you know uh, um, yeah judge judgment on sexuality which is really rooted in a financial inequality that has been going on for thousands of years and um, um, that is my life lesson <laughs> I feel like really cheeky like oh <laughs> am I allowed to say that but this is really this is really one of the things that has been going on with me not just to cap the, the past few months but the past two years like or year even that I really gotten into the root of you know that I've really traced back so many things that I was struggling with you know uh, my position as an entrepreneur or my position as an artist or um, uh, yeah just you know the general uh, uh, um, how sexuality is not part of, of society was actually not even what I have been studying the past year, but it is definitely a related conversation. But I really, you know, I really traced back a lot of problems that I have and that other people have going all the way back to this, to this um, uh, thing of, of how capitalism works. And that it's just, just so important that you understand that, you know, uh, that financial inequality is at the root of what we think are life choices or identity choices or culture clashes or if we would strive for and you know look after each other to to make ourselves and others financially prosperous and to um, uh, you know root for each other the, it wouldn't it wouldn't be so the discussion the, the conversation wouldn't be so narrow as to oh um you know you should be faithful or you are a bad person or whatever so um uh the price of love <laughs> my first video on capitalism i think i think i needed i think i needed a drink <laughs> okay so that was it um, I'm back on the wagon, so I'll probably see you tomorrow with the next song. Have a look. Um, 